one. Dick Kendrick with Merlin Olson in Cincinnati. Just simply, the meteorologist put it this way, it's gone from bitter cold to brutally cold. Did you ever play in anything like it? I didn't play in this colder weather. I played in some cold games, Dick, but nothing to match this. Let me ask you some fan questions. One, Anderson and Fouts, two great quarterbacks. Can they pass today? I think they have to try. I don't know the answer to that question. We'll find out soon, but they've got to try and do what got them here. They're both passing teams. They're going to try and throw the football. Forrest Gregg, the AFC Coach of the Year. Some Vaseline applied to his face to protect him from this bitter cold. He remembers a day in the early 60s when with the Green Bay Packers he played in New York came out of the game with a limp ear. He said he just looked like a, a dead rose just flopped right over. He thought he'd never retain the, the right uh, uh, position of that ear and he, fortunately it came back for him. That was that cold that day but it's colder today. Both coaches going to be hard pressed today to find a way to cope with this situation to find a way to win. We're going to find out how resourceful these two teams are in combating this cold. James Brooks is the deep man for San Diego, led the entire NFL in all-purpose yardage. Jim Breach kicks it off. It's short, and that figures. Brooks at the 9, 15, 20, and he's down at the 25-yard line. From the 25, well, the crowd is cold, but it is noisy. Three, maybe four to the 29 yard line. Maybe something in that first play. They came out running the football. Let's see what Fouts does on second and six. In slow in motion. They run it to the left to Muncie. And he has a first down as he crosses the 35 yard line. Brian Hicks, number 27, came up from a safety spot to make the tackle. And Fouts calls time. The perfect hot wire getaway. Shop till you drop. Our big story tonight, the retirement of Giants defensive end Michael Strahan. He's calling it quits after 15 seasons. He'll speak to the media about his retirement tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. You can catch that press conference live right here on NFL Network as well as on NFL.com. Also, the Chicago Bears have wave running back Cedric Benson. Benson was arrested for DUI over the weekend, only five weeks after being arrested for voting drunk. Seahawks coach Mike Holmgren missed minicamp on Monday because of a minor medical procedure of an undisclosed nature. He's expected back at practice. On Tuesday, Holmgren turns 60 on Sunday. Elsewhere around the league, wide receiver Marcus Robinson will retire as a bear. He signed a one-day contract in order to retire with his original team. And the Houston Texans have released quarterback Wayne Gray. Now back to NFL Classics, 81 AFC Championship game. things we ought to consider in the early going here first the one thing that the players have out there it appears is good footing today this turf is frozen dry and the footing should be pretty good except for the treacherous far corner of the end zone one of the other big things to consider this day on a cold day with with any team is fumbles and turnovers especially so with Chuck Muncie if they're going to rely on him he's had a history of coughing the football up has a hard time holding it appears to run in a straight up position and a lot of times those helmets bang right into that football but a costly turnover in the wrong part of the field could be the difference in a game like this it will be an interesting contrast in the two top runners Muncie although he's a big man likes to run wide uses speed Johnson a burly fullback in the traditional sense at 250 pounds runs tackle to tackle primarily and rarely fumbles First down, San Diego at the 36. About first throw of the game. And he misses Winslow at the 40-yard line. Riley over there along with Cameron, but Winslow was alone. Now defensively, Merlin, Cincinnati is going to try to check Winslow as much as they can. They're going to have someone with him all day. Let's watch the football. Looked like it got away from Fouts a little bit here. The ball just took off on him. Already, Fouts uh, showing the effects of the cold as that ball got out of his hand. And that's one of the things you lose. You lose the feeling in your hand, and that football gets hard and slick. Second down and 10. Fouts breaking all of his own NFL records that he set last year. Another pass. This to Chandler. And he gains only a couple. Louis Breeden and Bobby Kemp were on top of Chandler as soon as he caught the ball. 
in that big game early in the year when the Cincinnati Bengals embarrassed the Chargers. One of the things they did early defensively was to really shake up the receivers when they caught the football with that same kind of hits. You saw the statistic on Chandler 52 catches counting his receptions at New Orleans earlier this year. He finished with 69. Third down, eight at the 37 against a five man defensive back set. Going to be intercepted. Oh, Ooh. it was not. That ball just died out there. It was a sure interception at about halfway there, and then the ball just floated and allowed the offensive player, Joyner, to come in and break it up. Dick, it's apparent that the Chargers still feel that they can throw the football, although Fouts has had trouble here early. Had the one pass get away from him, and this one appeared to get away, too. Watch the ball just die. At the... It just, and it almost came down right in the hands of Charlie Joyner. He almost picked it up. Now remember, San Diego was throwing into the wind. The Bengals will get the ball with the wind at their back. George Roberts with Mike Fuller at the other end. Short kick. And it goes out of bounds around the 35-yard line. The Bengals had the ball for the first time at the 36-yard line. On that last play, Dan Fouts was bumped just as he threw that football. If you're wondering why it died the way it did, watch him just as he gets the ball off. Ken Anderson, the NFL passing champion this year, all-pro performer, and named MVP in the league. His first attempt, and he has a man, Alexander, at the 41-yard line. Five-yard game for Charles Alexander. Alexander the Great, they called him, after last week's fine performance. Second down four. Pete Johnson close to the 45, short of the first down. Well, quite a few of those offensive linemen out there with bare arms today. They don't want to give those defenders anything to grab on as they're trying to rush the passer. Two tight ends and David Mercer, the wide receiver, he's the flanker to the near side. On third and more than a yard, and it's going to be close. Depends on how much he was able to... Yes, first down, Cincinnati. First down for Ken Anderson. He dumps it out in the flat. Oh, you can see again, that pass just died as he tried to find Pete Johnson. It would appear, Dick, that both these quarterbacks have decided to throw shorter passes today. I think that's a good choice. No one has really tried to get deep yet. First quarter, we played about four minutes. Second down and ten. The draw to Alexander. Louis Kelcher stops him at midfield. 74, Kelcher. From SMU, the same school that produced Forrest Gray. One of the important responsibilities for Kelcher in that defensive line is to read and react to the draw. He's lost a little of that quickness in the pass rush, but he certainly read that play well, put himself into position. Had he not been there, Alexander would have made a little bigger gain out of it. They have the hot seats that have been transported to Cincinnati, both teams, uh, the heated benches, which will help somewhat. At the 50-yard line, it's third down and six. Kreider, Steve Kreider, 86 is in for Alexander. Three wide receivers. Ken Anderson in a pass situation. Kelcher appeared to be offside. Flags down. Caught by Ross. He's all the way to the 33-yard line. Dan Ross from Northeastern in Boston. He caught 71, a new Cincinnati record, and you can't throw that ball any better. He certainly figures to be a big part of the game here for the Cincinnati Bengals. They'll try to take away the wide receivers and single up on him with a linebacker. Woody Lowe is no match for Dan Ross. There's the quick shot of Kelcher getting off early, a little anxious. Of course, they'll refuse that penalty. They'll take the big gain on the pass. The Bengals moving the football here early and doing surprisingly well in this bitter cold. Dan Ross, who wanted not to be a football player, but a hockey star when he was a youngster. His dad in Massachusetts used to flood the backyard and create a skating pond for him. He wanted to be a defenseman. Decided he'd stay with football and regarded one of the top products out of the Northeast in the last few years. The telephones have gone out on the far side. 
The Cincinnati uh, coaches have just had to take off their headsets now. That's a rule in the NFL. If the uh, telephone communications between the coaches upstairs and the coaches on the sideline go out on either sideline, both coaches, both coaching staffs have to do without. Now you'll see some scrambling. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have some questions down there that will go unanswered. All right, this is an official timeout. First down, Cincinnati. Four straight Bengals are in San Diego territory at the 33-yard line, and they're working with the wind at the Bengals' back. They'll be looking up for some signals from the coaching box, but the offensive coordinator for the Bengals, Linda Infante, is on the sideline. He'll be signaling in the plays from there. He actually doesn't signal them in himself. He calls them aloud, and a couple of the players and coaches signal them in to, to the quarterback, Ken Anderson. Johnson drives to the 23 yard line. He may have a first down. Lyndon Kang finally dragged the big guy down. Both offenses going to the big backs early. Muncy with a couple of good games, but Johnson gets a huge hole on the left side behind Munoz over there, breaks it inside, gets a big gain. 11 yards in the play, Merlin, for Willie James Hemming. That's his real name when he was a youngster. Pete Johnson weighed 180 pounds when he was in the seventh grade in Brooklyn and used a false name. Pete Johnson played seven years of high school ball. Inside the 20. Well, Louis Kelcher can drag down. That was Alexander that time. 18-yard line market, a gain of about four. It's second down and six. When you're playing against him, you don't you don't ask what his name was. You just say, "Who was that big guy?" <laughs> <laughs> he weighs about 260 pounds. Last year got as heavy as 267, but he is one hard back to bring down. Built for this kind of weather, and the tradition of Paul Brown's teams in Cleveland, he always liked that big fullback, Marion Motley, one of the best. Is happy with these set of backs. Alexander is no midget. He's 221. This is Johnson. Big hole. And he's close to the first down. Stops at the 13 yard line. Now both coaching phones are back, so they're now in telecommunication with the press box. Gary Johnson finally making the tackle. They're checking the sidelines. It appears to be short by about a half yard. One of the questions I asked Forrest Gregg. Yesterday was, what are you going to look for early in the game out there? He said, I want to find out, I want to find out very quickly which players want to play and which players don't. He said, if a guy doesn't want to play, he'll come out of the game, and we got to find out on the other side which of their players don't want to play because we'll go after them. Third down, Cincinnati. They've made good on their first two third down conversions on this drive. Play action. Anderson's going for it all. Is Alexander. He wanted to go in the end zone and look who's wide open. David Bursar was all alone in the end zone. An obvious running situation. Anderson really crossed him up. They were able to get a piece of the receiver as he got out of there. Alexander getting out clean in spite of that. But the pass simply overthrown. And again, the difficulty of throwing the ball deep today. So hard to get a good grip on that football, to control it with any finesse when it's so bitterly cold. Little Jim Breach, 5'6", a size 5 shoe, is trying to nail a three-pointer from 31 yards away.
difficult again to hang on to that football when it's so cold. You lose, you just lose the feeling of it. The ball stripped away beautifully. Rick Rosano, number 51, the man down to knock it away, and they are right on top of it. Let's That's see if they can take advantage of it, Dick. The ball's at the 12-yard line. Rosano's tackle, Bass recovered. Anderson gives it to Alexander, and he's to the nine, maybe the eight. Woody Lowe led the defensive charge for San Diego. So a big break for the Bengals. They won the toss and elected to take the win in this first quarter. So San Diego took the ball. Bass, for the moment, the star for Cincinnati. Give Alexander four yards on that first down carry, and it's second down and six for the first down. Nine yards for a touchdown. They go with two tight ends, Ross and M.L. Harris with Alexander out. Collinsworth, the rookie, bottom of your screen. Curtis on the far side. Anderson to throw. position 35 yards on the return Fuller made the tackle let's go back and look quickly at that scoring pass to ML Harris got a chance to see him as he gets into the pattern here just starts across gets a good bump in there from Preston and then cuts back into the corner of the end zone ball quickly thrown right on the break there's no chance for number 27 Glenn Edwards to get over there and defend near the 45 that's Charlie Joyner in motion Muncie tries the middle and gets out to about the 47-yard line. Muncie had a banner year for the Chargers. 1,144 yards, 19 rushing touchdowns. His average right there in his back, 4.6. It's interesting, the two Cincinnati backs, Johnson 3.9 average and Alexander only a 3-yard average, where Muncie is a 4.6 and Brooks a 4.8 average. Well, we'll have to look at the averages today. I think they might be a little different on the day. Midway through the first quarter. Muncie trying to get outside. Can't do it. Cameron finished him off, but it was Louis Breeden who made the play from his cornerback spot. Breeden from North Carolina Central. Dick, Mike Adamley made the point early in the pregame show that today it's, it's not so much a matter of what you can do, it's what you want to do, a matter of will. Both these teams are going to have to press their their pain thresholds today to see which one wants to stay in there the longest. It looks right now that the Bengals have certainly have the most enthusiasm, the most intensity in the early going. Bounce better get his gang together. On third and nine, over the middle, nice catch by Chandler, and he gets a block downfield at the 40 and out of bounds at the 34-33 yard line. Ray Griffin, number 44 in the nickel defense, ran him out of bounds. Nice throw. Fouts to Chandler. First San Diego completion. Chance to watch the drops there. A 21-yard completion to Chandler. But let's see if we can't see how he gets open there. 53, Bo Harris, the man in the middle. Kellen Winslow dropping back. But they threw underneath the drop of the linebackers on the zone. Chandler getting across, getting a block from number 87, Dwight Scales. Picking it up nicely. San Diego moving the ball. So much concentration on Winslow. They used Winslow as the deep boy and threw underneath him and now a flag as Fouts on a ball problem start. with a snap. Ball start San Diego five yards. One of the concerns that Don Coriel had was for the noise level in this stadium. Talking yesterday at the press conference, he said, I hope we don't have the noise problems that we had in Miami that they had here in the stadium with Buffalo last week. 
a real disadvantage for a visiting team. The crowd will quiet down very often for their own team. Noise level high. It's hard to hear the signals over the crowd. San Diego fourth this year in most penalty yards. Buffalo leading the way. So it's first and 15 San Diego at the 38 of Cincinnati. 10 nothing. The Bengals lead it first quarter. Muncie. He loves to run left and he's down to the 32 yard line. A gain of about six. Brings up second down to nine. I don't blame him for wanting to go out there. He ran into the sunshine. A little bit warmer out there. So one advantage that the, the uh, Chargers will have in the early part of this game, they are sitting in the sunshine. It's got to be a bit warmer. It's shaded on this side of the field, the near side, where the, the Bengals are. Got to be a few degrees colder. There's the sun on the far side. Second down and nine. Muncie and Brooks. Did he take a lick but hangs on to the football and is close to a first down at the 22 yard line. James Brooks what a what an outstanding addition to this Charger offense. That young man is is a lot tougher than his than his size would dictate and I'm sure he is very determined to make up for that fumble that cost his team a touchdown. He makes a good cutback. You can see him taking advantage of the footing good footing even in that part of the field. Gets down for the first down. The ex Auburn star who replaced Bruce Harper, who has had a lock on that all purpose yard uh, record. But this year it goes to Brooks. First down. So they were able to overcome the five yard penalty on first down. And here's Brooks again up the middle to the 20 yard line. A quick shot for about three. You can see that part of the area down here is shaded. Part of it is in sunlight. See that strip of sunlight going across the lower part of your picture? The receivers dropping into that area. We're going to have a problem looking into that sun. We also might point out as we pan out of the right, the end zone down here in the far right is the frozen end. That's where they like the Cincinnati receivers like to get their man turned around. We saw a touchdown last week when a Buffalo defender fell and Collinsworth scored. Oh. By 55, Jim LeClaire. The veteran from North Dakota had that ball bouncing right in his lap. Fouts trying to dump that ball off. Both these quarterbacks like to throw that quick dump off pass. Chance to see it in action. Dan Fouts making, making his mind up very quickly to just throw that ball out to Muncie, who then will become a pure runner with it. That's like a long handoff. But Muncie unable to handle the football. Almost got it taken away from him by LeClaire. Third down and seven at the Cincinnati 20-yard line. Remember, the Chargers going into the win. Muncie doesn't get much. You see those Bengal stripes, and it's like trying to fight your way through a jungle. There were three or four orange and black uniform Bengals on top of Muncie. And he gains but a yard. In comes Rolf Renerska to try a field goal that will be beyond 35 yards. They will mark it at about the 27 yard line. Renerska's numbers on the year and career. What a solid uh, kicker he has been inside the 40. Although we have wind swirling, looking at the flags at the top of the goalpost, very little wind right at this moment in that area. But the the banners blowing hard behind the goalpost. Hard to tell for a kicker which way to try and kick the ball. Just drive it right down the center and hope you're right. If nothing else, those banners have to make him think. He can see them wiggling and wavering in the breeze, and he must wonder what it'll do to his kick. Well, Cincinnati took the wind in this first quarter. Let's see if it pays off on this 37-yard attempt. Ed Luther to hold. It's got to be difficult to hold that football and get it down perfectly. Cincinnati Ohio the coldest day on this state in the history of this city perhaps the coldest conditions an NFL game has ever been played minus 59 wind chill Pete Johnson draws the crowd the differential between last week in Miami when San Diego played and the heat and humidity 84 degrees and today
today is 143 degrees turnaround. Wearing gloves and thermals, you can overcome some of that, but a good deal of, of the playing ability of these players is just the ability to withstand this terrible cold. In, in a way, Dick, it's easier for the players who are on the field or are moving around than for those who have to sit on the sideline and wait. And they're not going to get any warmer. That's why the early 10-0 lead has to be a true advantage for Cincinnati. Anderson who was very mobile and led the NFL in rushing quarterbacks. Gets about five, maybe more, to the 27-yard line. Dan Ross throwing a block out there. Maybe six to bring up third down and three. 318 yards for the veteran from Batavia, Illinois. They're going to have Ken Anderson day tomorrow in that city. That city also produced another great athlete, Dan Issel, the All-American at Kentucky and a great pro. And it's been Issel's town until this year. And tomorrow it'll be Ken Anderson Day. Well, you saw there one of the reasons that he is so highly prized as a quarterback. It's that running ability. He's averaged six and a half yards a carry during the season. Steve Kreider, third year man from Lehigh, an extra receiver. And that was Kreider that he was trying to hit, but the pass was way off the mark. It appears, Merlin, that the passes toward the sidelines are doing tricks, that the ones that have been completed have been those where the quarterback's thrown straight ahead. Well, I think you're going to see the ball doing tricks all day, Dick. You're going to see some good passes, but you're going to see a lot of them like that when they go off target. Again, that ball is difficult to grip. The hands are cold. It's hard to get a feeling on that ball. And the winds here are swirling. Those three factors make it difficult to put it there anytime, but especially so on a day like today. McAnally to kick the rock. Brooks at the 27 of San Diego. Just doesn't go anywhere, does it? Chandler, the short man at the 39, 45 and out of bounds into the Cincinnati bench. So the Chargers have good field position on a short 35-yard punt and a seven-yard return. Guy Frazier made the tackle. Timeout, one minute, 30. San Diego trails Cincinnati, 10 nothing. Muncie up the middle, and he fumbles. And I believe San Diego, one of the trailing linemen, fell on it at the 50-yard line. And that's that straight-up running style that we talked about earlier that's going to get Muncie in trouble because it's very difficult to clamp on that football. They just stepped it right out of his hands. Kellen Winslow in there ahead of him as a blocker, but the defender's going for that football, able to strip it away. San Diego lucky to have it. Winslow right at the top of your screen. One of the blockers trying to seal people out. Watch Muncie now. Watch him trying to cover that football. Glenn Cameron, number 50, one of the men in there. But they just pulled it right out of his hands. Veteran guard, Ed White, appeared to be the man who fell on the ball. Second down and six. A four-yard gain. Muncie again into Cincinnati territory, but short of the first down at the 47. Richie Williams from Dartmouth made the tackle, number 57, but plenty of help. Four yards on the play. Clock running down to 50 seconds left in the quarter. In last week's big victory over the Buffalo Bills, this Bengal team did not turn the ball over at all. Chuck Knox said he thought that was one of the big reasons for the victory. In the game today, we've already had a costly turnover. San Diego had 39 turnovers on the year. Buff or the uh, uh, Bengals only had 24, the lowest number in the entire NFL. Second down, or third down, and three for the first down. And Muncie driving hard will be close. Bengals, good penetration. It appears that they're going to give him the first down. I don't think they're going to give it to him. I think he earned it. Boy, that picture is deceptive. The sunshine, the blue sky, the color of the crowd. Yes, it could well be 40, 50 degrees, but believe me, it is not. It's below zero temperature and the chill factor with a wind minus 59. Can you perspire and weather this cold? Dick, uh, as cold as it is, these players work so hard on the field when they're going that they will actually perspire and it becomes a big problem because your gear gets wet and then if you stop you really get cold in a hurry. Muncie did make the first down and that is the end of the first quarter. The first 15 minutes belong to the Bengals. Statistically first quarter was even on the scoreboard Cincinnati leads 10 nothing. Seven of those points directly out of that costly fumble by James Brooks on the kickoff. From the 45 of Cincinnati, San Diego begins the quarter with the win advantage. That's Winslow, his first catch, and he's to the 38-yard line. Kellen Winslow, the leading receiver.
receiver in the NFL this year with 88 catches, just one less than the year before. What an athlete, and what a performance last week in Miami. Everyone is going to have to make adjustments today. Winslow, you'll notice as he'll make his turn out there, will just kind of plant, get those feet on the ground, and take short steps to keep his feet. Fouts definitely throwing the ball a little less crisply than he would on an ordinary day to make sure that Winslow has a chance to handle it. But that's a good play. We'll probably see that one again shortly. Seven yards before Louis Breeden made the tackle. On second and three, it's John Cappelletti in the game, and he has a first down at the 33-yard line. Of course, played his college football and had a Heisman senior year at Penn State. One of the reasons that we'll see some of Cappelletti today is playing in the cold as he did at Penn State. He knows how to handle that football. He's also a very fine blocker, and we'll see him leading Muncie on a number of plays. I asked him yesterday, I said, Penn State, this is your kind of weather. He says, I've been in California so long, that seems like, no pun intended, an ice age away. <laughs> he says, I'm as cold as anyone. The, the Chargers now have the winds at their back, Dick. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Trailing 10 to nothing, early in the second quarter. Bouts in trouble. It gets it away, and Winslow has blockers. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Kellen Winslow, a 33-yard pass play, and was that set up beautifully? They caught the Bengals in a blitz from the very side they were throwing the screen. You'd like to be lucky as well as good. Fouts was lucky. The man that would normally be responsible for getting out on that screen was indeed on the blitz. Watch him coming right there. That's Eddie Edwards diving, driving hard, firing it out to the outside to number 80 Winslow. And Winslow just using his athletic ability to turn it loose down the field. They'd spread the defensive backs with the receivers and Winslow able to run it on in for the uh, touchdown. So all the points have come with the win and here's the try after by Benerska. Oh, he just does sale one through less than three minutes for the Chargers to score on that 55 yard drive Bernerska Verser at the five the ten that's the running room we got one man to beat Bernerska and Dwight Scales came over to make the tackle at the 45 Bernerska slowed him up enough that Scales was able to make the tackle from the 45 the Bengals leading 10 to 7 Early in the second quarter, fake to Johnson, Anderson, complete to Dan Ross, and the tight end has 10, maybe 11 yards. There's Kellen Winslow on the sideline. I'm sure he's happy to get over there, get a coat on, and get a little bit warm. First, second down and inches for Cincinnati, so Anderson with a down to play with goes to Alexander. 35, 30, first down. Who had a couple of rushing touchdowns last week in the Buffalo win. First down at the 30 after that 15 yard gain and open again. This is Collinsworth, and he has another first down at the 19. That face tells part of the story. This kid is so happy to be here. And he's happy to be on the end of this reception, too. Got himself in good position, working on number 51, Woody Lowe, and in front of the right cornerback, Mike Williams, able to find the room, and a zipper from Anderson. Good play. Collinsworth, who as a prank sent Wes Chandler, the Chargers, a popsicle in his room last night. Special delivery. First down inside the 20. Reverse. Reverse. Collinsworth. And read pretty well by the Chargers. They stop him at the 16-yard line. Leroy Jones, number 68, the man who was upfield to turn it back inside. Got a piece of Collinsworth, but Bengals pulling out all the stops here, Dick. Watch Collinsworth now. He'll come back from his receiving position, and he'll take the football after the fake right there. Now watch Leroy Jones, number 68, come from the outside. Gets a piece of him there. The pursuit then from the inside. Big Louis Kelcher there along with Gary Johnson to finally put him away. A gain of about three, second and seven from the 16-yard line. Anderson, who is six for nine, make it. Oh, Johnson unable to hang on. A reliable receiver, the big guy out of the backfield. Johnson, who caught 46 passes this year. That's one of the favorite plays of the Bengals. 
We said earlier that Dan Fouts uses that kind of play as a long handoff. I think maybe the Bengals have used it even more. And normally Johnson just catches that one in a, as a matter of course. But the cold weather made it difficult there. And I think maybe saw a few bodies flying at him too. Third down. Steve Kreider, number 86. Is into the lineup for Cincinnati with Alexander out as Anderson will use the three wide receivers. Curtis, Kreider, and Collinsworth are all to the right. A triple right formation. On third down, a long seven. Plenty of time. Good at the one-yard line. Isaac Curtis. So he's using all his receivers. In the last three or four games of the season, the Bengals used 48 different formations. They throw everything in the world at you. They came with the three wide receivers on the same side. They're attacking a pass defense that was last in the NFL. And they show you how to do it right here as they get across in front of Mike Williams right there with a big, big reception. Let's see if they can get it into the end zone. First and goal at the one-yard line. They're already chanting Pete, Pete, and he gets it. And he has a touchdown. Imagine what we'd do for a new hand-spun Frosty Shake. They're blended by hand with sauces made from delicious ingredients. Does that sound good or what? It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Bengals leading 17-7. Here's Breach's kick. Taken by Pete Shaw, one of the upbacks, and he doesn't get to the 30. Davis of Cincinnati. Let's go back to the touchdown. Anthony Munoz, the big left tackle, led the way for the Bengals. Watch Munoz, number 78, working on John Woodcock, number 90. They go right in behind the big All-American and All-Pro. He's just driving, laying on top of Woodcock, just burying him underneath. Woodcock actually keeping his ground, but unable to overcome the momentum of Munoz. Pete Johnson go, went right over the top of him. All-American at SC, All-NFL rookie last year, All-NFL this year in his second season. Here's Munson crossing the 30 and dragged down at the 33. Bo Harris, whose wife presented him with a couple of dozen roses in the locker room yesterday. Kind of an obvious thing to go to, through the locker room, and here are two dozen roses in, in uh, number 53, Bo Harris's locker. And he says, wife just wants me to know that she cares. to realize sometimes that these football players are just real people. Right. And what a nice touch by this nice lady touch. fair. Absolutely. Second down and six at the 33. Once again. Too many Bengals and Bobby Kemp, 26. The rookie from Cal State Fullerton finished him off. You're down on the field. Tell us, uh, can you feel any tempo down there? Who has the edge down there? Well, Cincinnati Merlin definitely has the edge. I thought that San Diego perhaps would have the advantage there on the sunny side of the field, and it is significantly warmer over there. If someone would have told me before the game that these two teams would have 24 points at this point in the game, I would have told them they were crazy. That just gives you an idea, Mike, what it might have been like had we had decent weather. In fact, both teams agree that the losing club might have scored 30 points in good weather. Third down and six. Complete the joiner, and the veteran from Grambling has a first down at the Charger 45 yard line. Joiner, and what a season for the 33 year old. He had 70 catches. He came to San Diego from Cincinnati in a trade for Coy Bacon. He's certainly been valuable, and 
so dependable. And second oldest active receiver in the league, he still keeps right on chugging along. Put that one away, picked up the first down. Good pass by Fouts. And a third down, bread and butter play. Joyner, who had that big catch to set up the winning field goal in overtime at Miami last week. Fouts out of the backfield, Winslow. Oh, as soon as he caught the ball, Jim LeClaire and Cameron were right on his back. Six yards on the play. See the wind whipping the banners around the stadium. Not quite as windy out in the middle of the field, but the wind kind of swirls in this stadium. You could be standing out there and it would be calm, and then suddenly you'd feel this surge of wind. That's very difficult to deal with when you've got your, your hands on that football or you're trying to get it from one person to another. We can measure it mathematically, too, and we'll give you that right after this play. Second and four from the Cincinnati 49. Draw play to Muncie. He's got a little running room and a first down at the 41. The temperature is around 8 degrees. The chill factor is almost minus 60. That gives you an idea what the wind does to the effect. Wind and humidity being right next to the river the way we are, we do pick up some of that as well. But I, I am really impressed, Dick Enberg, with the way these two teams are handling the cold weather. They are here to play football. It's apparent that, that they're going to do it in spite of the cold. And quite surprisingly, as Mike indicated, we're going to have a fairly high-scoring game. There are the game conditions. Bitter cold. Well, they didn't miss that one. Brutal <laughs> cold is what the man said on TV last night. Here's Brooks on first down to the 37-yard line before Reggie Williams, three-time All Ivy League linebacker of Dartmouth, makes the tackle, and Jim LeClaire has to be restrained. You don't want to lose your cool in a game like this. Wait a minute. Toss you out in a hurry. No pun intended, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks, by the way, averaged 4.8 yards per carry every time he touched the football during this season. We talked about his importance to this team as a special teams player, but he also can carry the football. Great quickness. Less than six minutes left in the second quarter. Cincinnati leading 17 to 7. Second down and six for Fouts. Dumps it out to Brooks behind a block. Good cut, but not a first down. He stopped at the 33-yard line. Don Masick, the center. 62 is the man out in that pulling out away from center and leading the block. Bo Harris and Bobby Kemp made the tackle. One of the ways you try and combat the rush is to use little draw play or little screen plays like this. You let everybody penetrate and slip in behind them. Good play and good moves by Brooks, but he finally ran into the bulk of the Cincinnati defense and they stopped him. Cincinnati had six sacks in that earlier game. You obviously want to try and avoid that. Fouts has been able to avoid the sack so far in this one. It's a short three, third and about two and a half. Fouts going for it all to join her. Intercepted by Breeden at the five-yard line. Fouts obviously thought that he could catch the Bengals looking for a run on third and three, but Breeden, who was the nemesis when he intercepted a Fouts pass, went 102 yards to tie an NFL record a touchdown in the regular season game was right there and now Cincinnati with the ball at the six yard line they lead 17 7 the interception by Braden in the second turnover so it's two to nothing Bengals leading in that department cross buck to Johnson and the big fullback is out to the 13 yard line let's go back to the play Kellen Winslow was arguing vehemently after that last play let's see what happened Winslow over the middle that's Glenn Cameron a little extra work there by Cameron Winslow said that he should have had a penalty. Now here's the man he wanted to go to number 18 Charlie Joyner Joyner getting deep on this play but look at Louis Breeden get great position on him slip right in in front of him and take the football away from him. Well, a couple of turnovers a fumble led to a key touchdown only a 12 yard drive in the first quarter for Cincinnati. Second down three Alexander met sharply in a good defensive surge by the Chargers. It was Gary Johnson and Louis Kelcher, the two tackles pinching in on the running back from LSU. Down at ground level, you can feel what it feels like to line up in that back. A little misdirection. They started to the right. Alexander coming back to the left, but no one moved out of the way, and they swarm over the top of it. Big 99, Wilbur Young getting a piece of him there. These Chargers do a better job of playing against the run by far than they do against the pass. The Bengals finding that out today. Third down and three. With 3.40 left in the first half. 
Anderson. Open. Oh, and a fine play by Woody Lowe. Dan Ross was open and Lowe just diving out and batting the ball away. An excellent play by the former star at Alabama. Anytime you get a fine receiver like Dan Ross one on one, you want to go to him. And there he is, one on one on a linebacker. That's the setup they wanted. But Woody Lowe just said, no, sir, you're not going to take that football. Fine play by the linebacker Lowe. Now the Chargers with 335 left in the half will get another chance before halftime to cut into that Bengal lead of 17-7. McAnally will pick from around his three-yard line. Chargers have two four. Now they move one up, four men back, and just a few up. Short kick to Chandler, and he lets it bounce. And it takes a kind Cincinnati roll to the 45-yard line. WLW NBC affiliate, Channel 5 here in Cincinnati. We want to thank them for their hospitality. San Diego with the ball at the Bengal 45-yard line. Trailing 17-7. Bounce to Winslow. Well, there's that timing pass, and never better illustrated. You talked about that so many times in the past, Merlin, how Fouts throws to a spot. The ball was there as soon as Winslow turned almost too soon. Back in alley. You wonder why it's tough to kick the ball in this weather? We'll let the punter himself tell us. Cold weather, it's uh, difficult to compress the ball. And, you know, you just hope that you get real good contact and you can follow through. Uh, you're just not going to kick the ball as far when it's cold. So it's just like kicking a rock. Second and ten from the 45. Bouts a little fake flanker screen. And then he goes to his tight end, Sievers, to the 32-yard line. That's a first down. Eric Sievers from Maryland, a rookie picked in the fourth round. That was a play that we have not seen before. We're going to see a lot of plays today we haven't seen. Eric Sievers, the number two tight end, and they were playing two tight ends in there today. The Cincinnati coach is very impressed with that young man, and all the concentration on Kellen Winslow allowed Sievers to get open on that play. It was a little fake to the outside, a little screen fake. But Sievers finding the open room in the defense and then just protecting that football with both arms to pick up the first down. Block is running, 238, 237 left in the half. Up the middle goes Muncie, and the big back from the University of California is to the 26-yard line before Brian Hicks can make the tackle. And that kind of hit just makes you wince. You had to play in this kind of weather. That are you so numb that it doesn't hurt, or can you express what it feels like? Believe me, it hurts down there. The body gets cold, and you, your body is just not flexible in the cold. And every one of those hits goes right to the <laughs> right to the core of the body with great pain. They say bone-jarring tackle. A bone marrow must uh, ache after a game like this. It certainly does. One of the things that they have done is to develop good gloves, though. Get exclusive access to every team. Stadium in Cincinnati, two minutes left in the first half. The Bengals lead it 17-7 over San Diego. Two weeks hence, indoors at the Silver Dome in the Super Bowl. A little conference going on on the far sideline. Dan Fouts and the coaches. Oh, you can see the effect of that cold, especially in the shaded area of the field here. Fouts over there. You can see the warmer in his hands. See the chemical warmer that he's using to keep his hands there? Only one penalty against the Chargers so far in this ball game, and certainly they're in good position here with the wins at their back. Like to take advantage of it, get it into the end zone. Ball at the 26-yard line. It's second down and four. It was in this situation last week, late in the game, that Buffalo, after a timeout, did not engineer the play in the necessary 30 seconds and perhaps lost a chance at a tying touchdown and the Chargers little confusion but they're apparently set to go in time Muncie running hard and close to a first down at the 22 it would be a first down the Cincinnati Bengals have great respect for the center of that San Diego line a very big line two Great guards. They say the best tandem of guards in the NFL. Watch him right here. Ed White, 67, out quickly to work on the linebacker. Capaletti through to block. And big Chuck Muncie just lowered his shoulder, went through the opening to pick up the first down. That's the kind of play that the Bengals don't want to see much of today. Don Coriel, who was a ski patrol in the Army in World War II. First down at the 22. Clock running, 120 left in the half. Could be intercepted, and it is. That's Bobby Kemp, who 
who takes it out to the 18-yard line. Crouch threw right into two Bengal defenders, and Winslow is down in the end zone. Winslow tried to get up to make that tackle and may have gotten himself injured on the play. Bouts appeared to gamble on Winslow's ability to take that football away from the defender. He could see that Winslow was covered. He threw the football in there, taking a chance that Winslow could go up and, and out, fight the defenders. Watch Winslow now. Kemp, number 26, has been man-to-man -man with him almost all day. And watch what happens when that ball is thrown. It's simply underthrown. Winslow comes up, gets a hit right there, got his arm stretched out a little bit, and stayed on the turf. He's still on the turf. Kemp makes the most of the interception. Finally tackled inside the 20, but they took the ball away from the Chargers when the Chargers were moving up. It figures with a 10-point lead that Anderson will play it safe, but that hasn't been his style through the normal weather of this season. Gives to Alexander. Alexander wrapped up by Big Hands Johnson, number 79. Clock running, less than a minute left in the first half. So although Cincinnati leads 17-7, it's taken two interceptions to stop San Diego drives in this second quarter. We saw the battle over on the left-hand side between Anthony Munoz and number 90, John Woodcock. Watch Woodcock stuff it in there. And then Gary Johnson right at the bottom of your screen, 79. Now that's dangerous. Pete Johnson standing up that way. That ball is exposed. You don't want to give him a chance at that football in your own territory. 29 seconds could be the last play of the first half. Block running. Johnson just protecting that football, and Louis Kelcher there to put the hit on him. Big Louis backed him up at the line. That'll be the end. 10-9. Neither team going to wait around. They're going to head for the locker room. Three turnovers by Cincinnati. The difference in this first half. One led to an easy touchdown, and the crowd cold but loving it. At the intermission, it's 17-7. Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles with two different gels for softness and support are outrageously comfortable. On second thought, I think I'll walk. Are you gelling? Dr. Scholl's. This summer, Jason Witten of the Dallas Cowboys held a football camp in my town. I made some new friends and had a lot of fun. But most of all, I learned how to play the game. Jason taught me how to use my legs when I block. I tried it out on him and it took him down. I'm unstoppable. This is Jason Witten. You don't have to be a cowboy to make a difference. Volunteer at unitedway.org. A little you goes a long way. Pick a city, then get a four-star hotel at a two-star price from Hotwire.com. When four-star hotels have unsold rooms, they use Hotwire to fill them. So you get the lowest prices guaranteed. H-O-T-W-I-R-E, Hotwire.com. 2007 season. We are not finished, fellas. The five best games from each week are re-aired back to back. Put the hammer down one more week. Enhanced with coaches' commentary, NFL films footage, and wired sound. Watch. Prime time watch. Sunday is still game day. Don't miss the action. Don't get out your seat. You might miss something. Sunday starting at 1. Available in HD. You'll see it in replay. NFL Network. Let's talk internet. What should you look for? A water skiing squirrel. Sweet Tai Chi moves. Oh, uh, ex-boyfriends. Wrong, wrong, and Mr. Wrong. What you should look for is free. Where can we find that? The Holiday Inn. What would you send if I had showed you a picture of a coconut? Probably say coconut, then Holiday Inn. Must be tiring lugging around that giant brain, Mr. Dowd. The more you stay, the more you earn. Holiday Inn. Look at them. You give them the best years of your life, shuttling them around. Then they go away on one vacation without you. And all they can talk about is that Hummer from Avis. I'd like to see that Hummer have to take them to the stupid mall three times a day. Actually, I take that back. With dozens of the hottest cars to choose from, there's a reason Avis is your other car. Brian and all the NFL 81 crew, another outstanding job. We really enjoyed their 
excellence all season long. Now San Diego, they've gone from cold to hot. Now back to cold. Can you give us an appreciation of what that must be like? Well, obviously they were spending a little extra time trying to figure out how they're going to get some points on the board, get back into this ball game. Very difficult to to take that shock, although I'm sure they had the temperature lowered in that locker room so that the physical shock of going into the heat would not be so great. Kenny Anderson really has been the key to this ball game for Cincinnati in the first half, though, Dick, able to throw the football well going both directions, not only with the wind, but also against the wind. And Fouts having his problems. It would appear that his throwing action has changed, perhaps due to the temperature here. He has not been able to follow through properly on two critical passes. Two critical passes. The ball has come short and been intercepted. You see the numbers there, and the biggest number of all Three turnovers for the Chargers, no turnovers for the Bengals, and of course that leads directly to the scoreboard where they have the edge. The Chargers will get the ball first to start the second half, but as it was at the beginning of the game, they'll get the ball going into the win. It seemed to bother Fouts more than Anderson. At the beginning of this game, Bengals won the toss, they took the win. Chargers had the choice in this half, the option of taking the win, they did what they have to do. They took the football. They've got to get they've got to get the ball and get it into the end zone to get back into this game. San Diego moved the ball well enough, especially in the second quarter, but two interceptions, one at the Cincinnati six and the other in the Bengal end zone stop Charger drives and they trail it 17 to seven Cincinnati opportunistic as they have been all season long. Dick just sitting out here. We're open to the air in our booth here. You can feel it getting colder. That's a trend that will continue throughout the game. It's going to be tougher and tougher to play football, but I am really and truly impressed with the quality of the performance of these two teams under these terrible circumstances. I'm really impressed with the way they both, both handle themselves. Absolutely. They are sitting on an electrically heated bench, but you know that that isn't helping an awful lot. There are the big blowers that also provide some warmth. The second half begins. Short kick at the 15 to 20. And out to the 30-yard line of the San Diego Chargers as it's returned by Doug Bedoin, former New England Patriot. Chargers take the field offensively with bounce at quarterback. Chuck Muncie fumbled once, but it was recovered by a teammate. James Brooks, his fumble on a kickoff return, covered at the 12, led to an easy Cincinnati touchdown. Joyner and Chandler outside. Winslow shaken up in the end zone at the end of the first half, and we'll have to check his condition. He's in the lineup and okay. Shields, Wilkerson, Masick, White, and Washington, a big forward wall from the 31-yard line. Muncie hit in the backfield, breaks one tackle, and loses a yard. Wilson, Whitley, and Eddie Edwards, and it was Edwards on the back of Muncie who secured the tackle. Ken Riley up from his corner position also in on the tackle. Edwards, Whitley, and Brown are all number one draft picks and all young. Bo Harris, LeClaire, the leading tackler, Cameron, and Reggie Williams. Louis Braden had one of the interceptions in the first half. The veteran Riley at the other corner with his career 52 interceptions Hicks and Kemp two young safety men second and 11 triple left formation only Muncie in the backfield into the win a man open and as Charlie Joyner hit immediately at the 39 yard line short of the first down by Reggie Williams number 57 Williams had a great year for the Bengals. There's a thermometer, the Fahrenheit on the left, and that one shows it's about four degrees above zero, but the official reports from the meteorologists say it's below zero, about five or six. Third down, call it two, a short two. Muncie has the first down, I believe. They spun him around at the 31. It appears he has the first down yardage. Louis Braden down low to submarine on the tackle along with Glenn Cameron. Number 77, Sam Clappen, a backup tackle used as a tight end as they come with three tight ends in the game. Kellen Winslow, number 80, the man that's holding off the linebacker on the inside, Cameron. And, of course, big Chuck Muncie using all of his strength. They're going to measure it. 
And he did indeed pick up the first down. Fred Silva, the referee, and for this officiating crew, an honor to be in the championship game. As it is an honor for us to be here in what is NBC's Super Bowl, our final telecast of the year, and there are the men who have earned the privilege of working uh, in the cold of Cincinnati today. And if they had a choice, even knowing the weather, you know they'd be here, as would all of us. First down at the 41. Muncie up the middle for three yards to the 44-yard line. And Cameron made the tackle. Second down and seven for San Diego at their own 44. Paul Brown in the left corner of your screen, a Hall of Famer, the great coach at Great Lakes, Ohio State, Cleveland Browns, formed this franchise, president and general manager of the Bengals and former coach. Fouts had trouble holding the ball for a moment. That's Chandler at the 45, 40, and out of bounds at the 38, and some fancy dancing by Wes Chandler and a first down for San Diego. Chandler's running ability, one of his great strengths. You'll, you'll, you saw it last week on a great punt return. You'll see it here again. Once he has that football, eludes Louis Breeden, number 34, manages to keep his feet pick up about an extra eight or ten yards after he caught that pass. Now watch Breeden on the replay. He misses the tackle here but doesn't quit on the play. He'll still come back and you'll see 34 in on the tackle. Well, we didn't quite see the end of the play, but he got a piece of the action. First down, San Diego. Muncie fumbles. And I believe the 